how to find supernatural healing. Um, I want to talk about this from the point of one who has been healed. Um, different times I've been healed. I'd like to say many different times, but not as many as I would like. I've still got some ailments that I would have to like for the Lord to take care of. <clears throat> But I do know that God is still healing today because He has healed me. And it's done in such a way, in such a fashion, that <clears throat> there's no doubt that it was God. Okay. And um, I want to talk about how that it happens even though I'm not an expert on the total um, thoughts that God has in mind or the I don't like this I feel like I'm stretching my neck there that's a little better <clears throat> when when God heals someone it seems to me like and this is just my opinion. It seems to me like that God, is, you know, chooses that person that He's going to heal, when, where, how. Um, but I know that we can sway the heart of God in healings, uh, because the Book of James says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much uh, before the Lord and. Right there, James was also talking about laying on the hands, and he was talking about how that the uh, call together the elders of the church for those who are uh, sick, and it says the prayer of faith shall save them. And um, so we know that we can sway God's heart, but it's, you know it's still totally up to God who gets healed has to do with faith, has to do with believing, and has to do with acting on that faith. It's not, just, it's not good enough just to have the faith, but you have to have the kind of faith that you trust God enough to act on. Uh, for instance, I remember one time I was healed of a pain in my upper back, and I walked in and I told this friend of mine, who was a preacher, I says I've got this pain back here, in my upper back and my, I think it was my neck. It was like a lower, my lower neck. My, it's been quite a while to remember exactly. And he said, "You mean you had a pain?" And he put his hands on me, prayed, and he commanded that thing to leave, and it left just like that. I didn't have time to think about it, you know. So his faith uh, healed me. And. Uh, <clears throat> Another time this fellow was up, a friend of mine also who was a preacher. He wasn't my friend then, but he's just a preacher then. And the Lord gave him a word of knowledge. He talked about the ailment that I had. And I, I raised my hand and, and it, it was instantly gone. Instantly gone. I mean, it just it vanished. It just left. As soon as I had obeyed the Lord, the thing was just gone. Okay. Now I know, okay, now here's some other things that happen with uh, healing. Uh, the Lord showed me a cancer being healed. Now they was, the church was praying for this lady. We was at this one particular place. And um, the Lord showed me, I, you know, I, I like closed my eyes and the Lord showed me this cancer was like, in her just shrinking up I saw it shrink it smaller and smaller and smaller and, and so and I told him I said the Lord show me this cancer shrinking up inside of you and she went to the doctor <laughs> and she came back this is probably two weeks later she came back and she says the doctor says this cancer is shrinking up and that cancer shrank up and it disappeared and it went away and uh, 
there's some other times where the Lord will um, let me see things like that, you know, and different things. And it's it's like when I'm in a <clears throat> it's when I'm in a uh, a spiritual setting. It's like when I'm really close to God, you know. I mean, being close to God. Now that's that's something else we need to talk about because being close to God is not what some people think that it is, and it's more than what others don't think it is. You know, being close to God is simply is simply drawing your heart close to those passionate things of God. That's what it is. And that's all that it is. So that when that happens that you you can um, turn your heart to love the things that God loves. And the Lord will show you many, many different things in the Spirit. You'll have dreams. The Lord will speak to you in dreams. You'll see You'll see with your eyes. You'll see um, uh, visions. Um, the Lord will speak to you in in an audible voice if you uh, if God so de desires to do that. And I've I've heard the voice of the Lord with my own ears, so I know that the Lord. But it seems now when the Lord spoke to me uh, was uh, when I heard Him with my own ears. He spoke to me in a time when I was in suffering, and I needed that. I needed to hear that. <laughs> I need to hear the Lord every day, really. But boy, I really needed to hear it then, you know. And we were in a bad way. I needed to hear from God, and God, He um, spoke. And that's the only time I ever heard Him. I haven't heard Him since. Just that one day. Uh, that one time <coughs> that's been been quite a while back <coughs> excuse me but um, with healings now uh, the Bible says call together elders of the church the book of James praying over those and it says the prayer of faith will save the sick okay now we've been to church hundreds of times where they've all gathered around and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. And nothing happened. You know, most often time when you go to church you'll see people praying and, and most often you uh, what you will see in the normal church today is is nothing happening when people pray I mean instantaneously S something always happens okay but um, instantaneously most often you will see not anything take place uh, with your eyes you know <clears throat> so swaying the heart of God is not uh, is not an easy thing to do but it's it's not impossible. Uh, God's wanting us to um, have a relationship with Him, and a lot of times when you see nothing happening, it's because the people praying, or the whole church, or the assembly, or maybe the person they're praying for is just not in the place where God wants them to be yet, you know. And but I've noticed this in my life when when I am most compassionate before God it's when God most often moves I remember I had a toothache one time laying across my bed and I prayed and I was in very intense prayer and I said Lord and I reminded him of a promise that he made to us in the Bible about not putting anything on so we couldn't bear Fifteen minutes later, that toothache was gone, and I have never had another one since. It's been over twenty years ago. I still got some teeth, and I got some bad teeth, and none of them hurt. And <clears throat> and so I just, you know, I just want to say, from the point of view 
of a person who has been down the road and back again, it's not impossible to get there. It is not impossible. You can get there from here. Let me say it again slower. You can get there from here. <laughs> okay? You can do it. You can do it. You can believe. And find somebody who believes with you. And that always helps. Amen. All right, God bless. Thank you for joining. We'll see you again next time on the great message, Cross in the Middle Ministry.